Welcome back to the Gun Collective. Boys and girls, it's time to test some shotgun ammunition today. We're focusing on this new stuff from Ballistic Machinist. Now, this is a really interesting 12-gauge slug. It's made entirely out of brass, has a really unique design. There's flutes on the nose, and I don't quite know where this belongs. Should you use it for home defense? Should you use it for hunting? I don't know. So what we're going to do today is test it with some ballistic gelatin at approximately 20 yards. But holy crap! It looks like there's a snowman army coming. Here we go, boys and girls. Got him. So first off, what we need to do is establish some baselines, right? We've got some bare ballistics gelatin blocks, and I've got two different kinds of ammo. The one we just used on the snowman was this Rio Royal Buck. It's a low recoil, nine pellet going approximately 1,200 feet per second. So we're gonna throw that one in the chamber. So that's gonna be the first one you see. And then we're going to follow that up with some Federal Prairie Storm, which is my pheasant load. So what I wanna do here, why I'm showing you this, is so that we have a basis for comparison when we look at the slugs and see how devastating they may or may not be. Here we go, high speed, are you ready? Ready. Okay, here we go, let's hope I can take these shots and hit. Ready? Three, two, one, one, two. Man, that Prairie Storm kicked a little bit. That's cool, let's see what it did in high speed. All right, guys, so here we go. Let's kind of square everything up and get the measuring tape out and see exactly what we're dealing with. So the first block is about 14 and change. It looks like that one pellet that we were able to recover that I can see so far right here in the back, it's way in the back here to you guys, that is at about 16 inches on the dot. There you go, I'll put it on the front so you can see just at about 16 inches. I'm gonna pull that out of our catch block here. I've got my, uh, as Eric from IV88 calls it, eyeball pluckers. And there you can see the pellet, the 12 gauge pellet. And, and what's interesting is it's deformed a little bit and we'll get B-roll of this so you guys can see. It's actually deformed by going down the barrel because it is soft lead. So what we're gonna ascertain from this is that if we shot this with buckshot, we would see a mixture going to about 16 inches, maybe a little bit further, kind of all in here, right? But what we did see, interestingly, is that the Prairie Storm ammo is absolutely devastating. Let's, let's kind of find, we have one pellet kind of back here that's over 13 inches deep, over 13 inches on bear gel out of a 28 inch shotgun. Guys, this is really interesting. I did not expect this. A lot of folks recommend four shot, five shot for home defense. And according to this, that might be something we have to explore at a later date. But really, this is all about a baseline. You can see the wadding in here. You can see all kinds of pellets in here. Really, really cool in our front block there. Beautiful high speed. And I think what we need to do is now shoot the slugs and see what's really taking place. The buck and bird load, pretty cool, right? But we're here to test slugs. So what I've got in my hand is a low recoil slug. This is one and one eighth ounce, about 1200 feet per second from Rio. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and plop it in the block and see what kind of terminal effect we get. Now, this is gonna be loaded up with two rounds because I wanna make sure that I actually get a good shot. We're running out of light really quick here at the range. So I'm gonna do my part and uh, here we go. High speed, are you ready? Yep. In three, two, one. <laughs> uh, I think my first one went a little low and it looks like the second one might be in there. Let's check it out.
Well, boys and girls, that's why I shot two rounds. <laughs> the first round obviously went into the table. You can see there's a line here where that slug just penetrated all the way into the table and just broke it. We bought this table today for this purpose and it's already flippity floppity. No good, that sucks, but whatever. It just uh, barely scraped the block here. As you can see, I'll pull that away. Let's get the catch block out of the way. So you can see where it just kind of scraped the block in this region and it appears we have a result. Okay, so absolutely devastating terminal effect from the slug and what's really interesting is it didn't actually penetrate through our entire block here at approximately uh, 14 and a quarter inches. Holy crap, that is not something I expected. Every other time I had seen a gel test, these had penetrated deeper than that and it didn't even make it into our catch block. So let's go ahead and dig it out. As you can see, there's wadding and some other crud in there. Let's see what, what that just, I think that's part of the wad in there. Here we go. Right in with the eyeball pluckers. Here we go. Very weird to pull this out. So there's the wad, pretty cool. As you can see, it's actually got a piston on the rear that the slug uh, sits around, so it helps it stabilize. And we're gonna go back in and see if we can pull that slug out of there. It looks like it's all kinds of mangled. Yeah, wow, wow, look at that, boys and girls. This thing just kind of came apart. So what I'm, what I'm believing is maybe this over here is a piece of the slug. Let's see if I can pull that. Yep, that's a piece of lead. So what we have here is a projectile that, as far as I'm concerned, kind of failed because it didn't stay together. Uh, some would say that that is a, an advantage. Uh, I don't think so in this case, but it was a rifled slug and uh, just kind of came the F apart and stopped, likely because it is just flippity flopping inside the block it likely stopped early because of that. I believe if this was a solid projectile and did not rip on the one portion, you can kind of see here that it, it just came apart. Wow, so cool. So I believe that's likely why it stopped early and did not continue to penetrate. But I think what we need to do now that we have that comparison is we need to put that brass pellet in a gel block and see exactly what's happening because I highly, highly doubt that thing is gonna come apart. Let's get to it. So we have our baseline with a standard rifled slug and now it's time to take a look at these brass slugs. Now, I'm looking to see if we get some additional terminal effect out of the flutes on the nose and to see if that kind of flatter nose just gives us a way wider thing and if because it's brass and it's solid, I'm looking to see if that gives us deeper penetration and thus putting this maybe into a hunting type category. Again, two rounds. We've got the remainders of our blocks down there. And uh, here we go, boys and girls. High speed, are you ready? Yep, don't break the table. <laughs> don't break the table. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, wow. Uh, I think I took a chunk out of the top of the back one because <laughs> I saw it go into the woods over there. <laughs> Look at the table. I can't, I can't. Um, the table's doing good. Table's doing good. Uh, wait, wait, not as good. Is it still moving? It looks like it is. Let's give that a second. Oh, that's gonna fall. Oh, there it goes. Bye. All right, there it goes. <laughs> All right, okay. I'm get the other uh, one. The first block to... is down. I don't want it to get messed up anymore. <laughs> Let's go. And that is why we film things with a high-speed camera because that projectile, both of them, went off into Never Never Land. Let's get a total measurement of our gel here and see what we were really dealing with. Approximately 23 inches of ballistics gelatin and uh, that's because we had a derpy block on the front that was kind of screwed up so we cut it short. But the reality is uh, that brass projectile not only went through 
this top block, this front block here, did massive wounding. It was kind of on a downward path, and what it did was go through the table and off into the mud pit that is behind our backer here. And then I, I got one that I believe hit this top block because all kinds of stuff was going on. You guys can see that, but all kinds of stuff was going on, and it literally just blew a chunk right out of the top of this thing. That is far and away more devastating. Um, that I, I believe the path of wounding was more devastating uh, in total. Let's look at the, the one that went down. So if we're kind of looking at where it left and got into the table, we're looking at about 18 inches of penetration and then it went through a plastic table and then off into nothingness. That thing was still cooking with speed at that point and I think that's one of the most interesting things. To me, that type of projectile would be great for big game. If you can make that thing hit, and it seems to be fairly accurate for me today, if you can make that thing hit and do your part, it's gonna drop whatever animal you're aiming at. The other one, the, the standard lead slug to me, almost seemed like it would be better in a home defense scenario. Now, whether or not you choose to use slugs uh, is kind of up to you. You're gonna have to think about your home situation and whether or not that's the best decision. But I think we learned some really interesting stuff today. We could, we've got enough ammo, do some more testing with that brass projectile. Maybe we'll get out and do some barriers. But what I wanna know is what you guys think down in the comment section below. Let me know what was your favorite kind of ammo to see here today. If you liked the snowman horde that was coming at us in the beginning, I appreciate you guys watching. This was a mountain of fun, and uh, it was just a quick little ballistics gel test doing the high speed video. And of course, thanks to Genevieve for helping. Genevieve, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, guys, thanks to you as well for watching, and we will see you next time. Ah, ah, broken table. Ah, ah.